You know, there's a ton of information out there that exists, whether it's in bookstores or it's online, about the actual act of taking a photograph. So things like, you know, what are the best camera settings or how to create a compelling composition. And then on the flip side of that, there's a ton of information on the actual act of editing photos. What are the best editing softwares to use or things like how do you update exposure? How do you update white balance? But there's not a lot of information out there that exists on the topic of the event that transpires between taking the actual photograph and actually editing the photograph. And that time period between the two is something that I really used to struggle with when I first got into landscape photography because I'd go on a trip much like I just did. I would return with an SD card just jam full of images, a thousand images. And I knew out of those 1,000 images that I'd be lucky if maybe six, seven, maybe eight of those photos were real keepers. But how do you dwindle it down from 1,000 photos to seven or eight photos, especially when a lot of them are kind of the same composition over and over and over and over again? You're just trying to time uh, different weather conditions, whether it's moving water or fog or color in the sky or light on the ground. How do you go through that process without it taking forever? And it's this is something that I've really worked hard at for the last couple of years, just trying to get a, a very repeatable process that I can apply every single time I come back from a trip, just that way I'm not spending hours or days trying to cull through thousands of images, trying to figure out which ones are the best and which ones are not to ultimately delete. So this is the process that I go through, and this is my SD card from my uh, recent trip to Oregon. And uh, I believe there is, let me get to the bottom here, I think there was 900, it was just shy of 1,000, 971 photos from my 10 days in Oregon, which honestly is not a whole lot for me for 10 days. But the majority of that time was actually spent at the Out of Oregon uh, Landscape Photography Conference where I was doing more instructing than actually focusing on my own photography. Almost all of these images came after the conference when I was actually on my Oregon road trip, which was the topic of last week's video. So what I always do is I always start at the top and as you can see where, you know, where the compositions change, it's all based off of location. I usually find a composition I like and then I just do kind of just subtle variations of it. And I just take a lot of the same image over and over and over because maybe I'm trying to time uh, or get a certain effect with the water or I'm trying to get a certain amount of color in the sky or whatever it is. But what I like to do is I'll go through here and I ask myself, you know, what are the changing variables for this scene right here? It's not the composition. The composition is pretty much the same. There's really nothing going on in the sky, but the variable is the water. That's what's changing. So I usually just kind of click through these and I'm paying attention to the water itself. And that's the one that I ultimately went with. I shared this on Instagram, I think two weeks ago, but I really like this image right here. Even got a little bit of color in the sky, but that's ultimately what I'm looking for when I'm going through my images is what is the changing variable in which of these images portray that changing variable in the best way possible. I think that's a good way to put it. And what I do is I don't mess with one star ratings or two star ratings or even three star ratings. All that I do is four and five star ratings. And what I usually do is I'll just make the, uh, the images, you know, large on my screen and I just go through these really quickly and maybe I'll just, I'll four star this and maybe I'll five star that and maybe four star this and five star that. That was just an example, but I just kind of go through all of them pretty quickly. I'll only spend a couple seconds on each image. Just go with whatever your gut says. If you like it, four star. If you, if you don't like it at all, don't give it any rating and just move on and hit the right arrow key. So I just do four and five star ratings. Five star ratings are the ones that I absolutely love. And the four star ratings are the ones that I, I like quite a bit, but I don't love it. And then once I go through everything, I just come up here to a library, filter by rating, four and higher. So this is going to be everything that I indicated was a four star and a five star. So I dwindled everything down from under a thousand images to about 87, which is a huge step down. And this is a much more manageable folder to work with. And I believe that initial pass that I went through, I think it took me about 20 minutes, which honestly is not a long time to go through a thousand photos and rate them. And in the past, I would literally spend multiple hours across multiple days doing this. So this process has really helped me to just kind of go through rapid fire, just four star or five star the photos. But this is everything that I got. Uh, you know, I'm not super excited about some of these images right here. There was nothing going on, on in the sky in this afternoon here. So I tried, I just put on my long lens and was trying to get some crashing waves between these two C stacks. But Nothing really materialized. I did like that bird there, and I like the water splash here, but the waves quite, they weren't quite big enough that particular evening to create that type of a, an image. 
But I did really like this image right here. I put a quick edit on this one, but this is probably something I'll do something with uh, later on. But, um, and then I really like this one here, but I messed up the composition pretty badly. I cut the lighthouse off down at the bottom here. I did fix it, but uh, then the, there's, a, there's an area, if you swing around over here more, you can get a break between the, uh, the land and the lighthouse here, so there's separation there. And unfortunately, I did not get that in any of my images there, so I'm not sure if I'll do anything with the lighthouse there. But um, just to kind of go through some of these real quick, I really struggled in uh, like a dislocation right here. This is uh, an area that there's just so much going on. It's an absolutely super cool uh, area to photograph, but I had a hard time trying to, you know, creating separation between all these sea stacks. The, the sky was okay. I do like uh, kind of moody skies, but I'm not super excited about that image right there either. But, um, and then this image right here, where is it like these images right here? I thought that was gonna be a grand idea, but it fell a little bit short. Same thing with this image right here. I do like it, but I think it needed some, some fog or a little bit of light or something like that. So I did five star and four star those because what happens a lot of times is I'll, I'll come back maybe a couple months later and I'll look through my four and five star folder from my Oregon trip. And a lot of those images I wasn't super excited about, I'm a little bit more excited about now. So I do like to go ahead and pick my, my best images from each location or each composition that I came up with, just that way I can go back and easily check later on. But let's edit some of my, uh, my favorite images from the trip. This right here is actually, this might be my favorite image from the trip. It was one of the very few instances where we got some decent light and decent color in the sky. And here is the, where is it? Actually, I'm sorry, this is the one that I really like the most because I like the water action because it's coming in like a V right here and it kind of mimics this area right here. So I think that went kind of went hand in hand. Plus there's a pretty nice little splash of waves back there in the, uh, the background as well. But this is the actual raw file right here. So the very first thing that I do is I always want to enable uh, profile corrections mainly because profile corrections will always change the exposure of your image because it's ultimately solving for the natural vignette of your lens. And it does that by brightening the corners. And it also fixes any kind of barrel distortion in your lens. But long story short, it's gonna make your image a little bit brighter. So if you wait to do that, say at the very end of your, uh, your editing process, you're gonna probably have to go back and adjust your exposure again. So I always like to do that as my very first step. And while I'm enabling profile corrections, I also remove chromatic aberration as well. Now the second thing, that I always do is I always apply a crop in the beginning. Now I usually will change this crop a little bit, but I always like to just kind of get it out of the way just so I can kind of see the palette that I'm working with. And for this one, I want to put this C stack right on this third and I want to put this C stack right on this third. I think something right about there looks pretty good to start. Maybe we'll split the difference and go right there. And I think it might be a little bit crooked as well. So maybe, this one's kind of a hard one to level off, but we'll just leave it right there for right now. And then I just start in the basic panel and I'm going to come up here to exposure. Definitely want to bring up the exposure some on this one. I want to add a little bit of global contrast. Definitely want to bring the highlights down maybe to about uh, maybe right there looks good. Shadows definitely need to come up. I don't want to come up too far because I don't want it to look HDR ish, but maybe somewhere right around there looks nice. And then the whites, want to bring the whites up some. Bring the blacks down a little bit. Maybe right there looks good. And then texture. I definitely want to bring the texture up quite a bit. And I want to bring the clarity up some. If you're not familiar with what the real difference between texture and clarity are, the texture slider is great and enhancing very small details in your image. And the clarity uh, slider is great at enhancing larger size detail in your image. And I think both of these in conjunction, especially the texture slider is great for, uh, for water or any type of rock where there's a very small detail, which is in this situation, we have a little bit of both. So I'm gonna use both of those sliders for this situation. And then the vibrance, I'm going to go ahead and bring that up to plus 15, maybe even bring the saturation up just a touch. Now, something that I'd like to do with all of my, uh, my sunset or, or sunrise images is split tone them with a warmer color just for the highlights. I don't do anything with the shadows, but I'll come up here to the highlights 
And I really like this kind of default uh, warm tone that Lightroom has right here. And you can see what that does to the overall image. If I turn this off, so this is off and this is on. You can see it really adds a lot of warmth to the sky and it even adds a little bit of warmth to the highlights in the water, which really creates the illusion that it's being reflected from the sky, which is a nice look. I like that. Now, as far as the vignette goes, I vignette just about every single image, some more than others. In some images, I like to create a custom vignette, but for this one, I think just a standard Lightroom vignette will be fine. And I'll bring that to about, I think minus 20 looks good. And I think I'm going to come back and maybe increase this just a little bit. Actually, let me check the, uh, the brightness of my monitor first. I always like to check the brightness of my monitor when I start fussing around with exposures of an image. But I think this one looks pretty good. And this is one of the one of my images that I just don't think it really needs a whole lot of work to it. I have other images that need a ton of work to make them look good. But I think this one, it just didn't need a whole lot. But I really like this image. This one might be my favorite at the group. Now, uh, let's go back and find another one. I had another one in mind here. Uh, this one right here. I really like this one, mainly because I love the water action. I love the C stack right here. And I really like the, the, the definition and the clouds. But most of all, there was this bird that just landed right on top of the C stack and just sat there for just a maybe 30 seconds. But he sat perfectly still because these weren't the, the quickest shutter speed. This is one fifth of a second. But he sat there perfectly still. And I like that, those types of very small details in an image, because when you first glance at this photograph, you would never notice it. But as you stare a little bit closer, you'll, you'll notice that there's a bird sitting perfectly on top of that C stack, which I think is pretty cool. Now, the raw file is, where is the raw file of this image? Right here. So I'm going to come up here to the develop module, and I'm going to come over here to lens corrections. Enable profile corrections, remove chromatic aberration. On my portrait photos, I do like to put it in a four by five aspect ratio. So I'm thinking, eh, I don't think there's a lot of interest above here. So I think all of this is kind of, there's just nothing going on there. So I'm gonna bring my crop down a little bit to about right there because I think all the interest in the sky is right here. So I think I'm gonna leave it right there to start. Definitely want to warm this one up. So maybe about right there. I think the tint looks good already on this one. Uh, I'm gonna bring the exposure up a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of contrast to this one. And then the highlights, definitely wanna bring the highlights down quite a bit. Shadows need to come up a little bit, not too much though. And then the whites. Uh, bring the whites up to Maybe about right there. Is that too much? Uh, and we'll leave it there for right now. And then bring the blacks down to about right there. I'm not going to do anything with clarity on this one, but I am going to bring up the texture a little bit. I think that looks good right there. And dehaze. This, this was a, there was a little bit of haze in this one, so I'm going to bring that up just a touch. I'm also going to bring the saturation up a little bit and bring the vibrancy up a touch as well because I'm gonna actually play with the individual color channels on this image at a later point. And then I'm gonna come down here to split toning, highlights, we'll add that warmth to this one. This one will really change it a lot because there's a lot of highlights in this one. And that one really kind of um, exaggerates just the overall setting sun of this scene right here. And then of course we'll come down here to the actual vignette. So for this one, I think I'm gonna put, not a large vignette, maybe just minus 15. I think looks really, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So for this one, I wanna play with the individual color channels. So in order to do that, I'm gonna jump into the HSL section. So I'm gonna come up here and I want to, I'm gonna play with the blue saturation because I think that's gonna impact the sky and it definitely is. So I'm gonna bring that up some, maybe about right there, looks good. I think the blue luminance will also have a nice effect as well. So I definitely wanna come down on the luminance maybe right about right there. I'm just ultimately trying to create a little bit more definition up here in the sky. And then I'm going to come down to the calibration section. Now, if you don't use the calibration section to impact your colors, definitely give it a try. It's super powerful, powerful, and it creates a completely different effect as just the global saturation or vibrancy channels and the individual color channels as well. So I'm going to actually tint my shadows on this one just a little bit. I'm going to bring them more down to the green side. 
and then I'm going to bring up the, I think I'm going to boost the saturation of all of these channels a little bit. Maybe the green, maybe right there, and then the blue channel, I'll bring that one up to maybe somewhere right around there as well. It's a very subtle change, but I think that that image looks pretty good right there. The majority of my editing process, it's I'd say it's Oh, I don't know, maybe 70% Lightroom, 30% Photoshop, but a lot of my images, I do almost everything in Lightroom. And, then, and the only reason I'll jump into Photoshop is maybe to add a slight Orton effect or maybe some subtle sharpening or, or to blend an image or something like that. Let's do, uh, how long is this going? I hope this isn't going too long. We'll do one more image. This is an image that I shared on uh, Instagram recently. Actually, this isn't it, but I really like this image. Here's the raw file. And here is the, uh, the the edited version. I just put a real quick edit on this one, but I really like the way this one's coming out. But uh, that's not the one I wanted to show. It was this one, th this one right here, this waterfall image. So I shared this on Instagram. I got a lot of great feedback, and I really like this image. But one of the problems with waterfall photography is one, you know, waterfalls are generally located in a woodland area, which always has trees, and trees always have leaves. And usually, when you're shooting waterfalls, you want to have a longer exposure. But unless you're at, you know, photographing waterfalls on a very still day and there's no wind at all and your leaves are remaining perfectly still, which never ever happens, you're gonna be left with a good looking flowing water from the waterfall, but you're gonna have your leaves that are all kind of blurry because of the wind, because of the long exposure of the water. And a really good way to get away from that is to do two exposures. And this is exactly what I did for this one. I did a single exposure, well, I'll show you. So uh, let me find it. So this is the single exposure for the water, a two second exposure. And I love the effect of the water on this one. But if we zoom into the leaves, you'll notice that the leaves are all very blurry. And then this is the image that I took for the actual um, leaves itself. So this is 1 15th of a second. And I do not like the, uh, the look of the waterfall on this one, but I do like the look of the, as soon as my computer loads this, the look of this right here. So the leaves in this one are much more sharp. Everything is perfectly still. So what I did is I used this as, I, I edited both images, but I'm gonna use this one as my base layer and then I'm gonna blend in my water. And in order to do that, I just basically opened up both of these images in Photoshop. So I basically would just, uh, well, let me edit it first here. So I'm gonna come up here to the, uh, the develop module. And uh, first thing we're gonna do is go to lens corrections. I'm gonna move through this one pretty quick because I'm afraid this is going too long. And then I'm gonna go to, um, I'm not gonna crop this one because I'm gonna take this into Photoshop. And if you crop an image, send it into Photoshop, and then you bring it back to Lightroom, that crop becomes permanent and you can no longer adjust it. So that's kind of a tip. If you're gonna send anything to Photoshop and back to Lightroom, send it to Photoshop uncropped. So I'm not gonna touch the crop on this one, but I am gonna come up here. Uh, we'll do white balance auto i think the white balance it, whenever an image doesn't need a drastic white balance shift i always like to just put it on auto just to see what lightroom does and i really like the effect uh, that what lightroom chose for this one and then for the exposure this is definitely underexposed so i'm going to bring this up quite a bit we'll add a little bit of contrast uh, maybe not that much the highlights i'm going to bring them down we'll bring the shadows up quite a decent amount actually the whites are going to come down and then the blacks are also going to come down uh, texture clarity I'm not going to do anything with those I'm not going to do anything with dehaze I am going to bring the vibrancy up on this one I'm also going to mess around with the colors individually for this image and then for I think that's good for right now I'm not going to do any kind of split toning on this one because there is no setting or rising Sun the effects so we'll apply a highlight vignette I'm thinking maybe minus 15 that's kind of my standard vignette and then I'm going to come up and start to play around with the individual color channels and I love fall photography for various reasons but mainly because the ability that you have to change around the color so I love to play with the hue saturation and luminance of the orange and yellow channels for for any type of autumn photography so for this one I'm going to come up here to the orange hue and I'm just gonna swing this back and forth because I wanna see what's being affected. And I wanna shift these yellows more towards orange. Nothing drastic, but just a little bit, maybe minus 10. And then I'm gonna come down to the orange saturation and I'm gonna decrease this, whoops, decrease this to maybe about minus 15. 
And then I'm going to take the orange luminance and I love luminance because you can actually, you're, you're brightening the individual colors and you're able to create the illusion that it, there's additional light hitting certain areas of the image. So I'm going to change the orange luminance to maybe plus 15, something very subtle. I think that looks good right there. And then I'm also going to come to come up to the yellow saturation. I'm going to bring that down as well because this image is very punchy. These vibrant colors were just off the charts bright. And then the yellow luminance, I want to do the same thing. I want to brighten that up too. Maybe about right there looks good. And then the green saturation, I definitely want to bring that down. I don't like having very punchy greens in any of my photos. And then we'll bring the green luminance up just a touch. I think something right there looks good. And then usually with any of my images of waterfall or any kind of water, it seems like water always comes out a little bluer than it really looks in real life. So I want to reduce the blue saturation channel. And if, if I swing this back and forth, you can really see it. But I'm going to bring this down to maybe a minus 25-ish. I think that looks good. And then once I'm happy with exactly where I have that, then I'm going to pick my two images that I want to bring over to Photoshop. And just select them both, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And I've already opened it up because it normally takes a little while. And here it is right here. So this is the image for the actual uh, water itself. So this is the one for the, uh, the exposure for the water. And then the one on the bottom right now is the exposure for everything else. So what I want to do is I want to put this one on top. And then I'm going to put a layer mask on this one by selecting this button right here. Make sure it's white. Paintbrush. Make sure my color is black right here. And I want to make sure that my paintbrush is a very soft paintbrush. So I'm going to make sure that this is at 0%. And I'm going to leave my opacity and flow at 100%. And then here's just the magic right here. And I'm just going to paint all the way over this waterfall right here. Now there's multiple different ways to do this. You can get really refined by using luminosity masks, but I found this one was easy enough to do just manually. And you just can kind of just paint all this in right through here. And this is exactly how I was able to combine both of those images together. And it didn't take a whole lot of time. You know, I, I zoomed in quite a bit at certain areas just to make sure that I'm only including what I wanted to include in the image. But that's ultimately it. And now for this photograph right here, I had the water, I have the water looking exactly how I wanted it. And I also have the leaves that are perfectly crisp with no uh, movement in them at all. So that's exactly how I was able to combine both of those two together. And that's a really fun technique. So the next time you're shooting waterfalls or anything where there's a uh, moving water and your leaves are blowing around, taking an exposure for your, a quicker exposure for your leaves, a slower exposure for your waterfall and then combining the two in Photoshop is a great technique. It's pretty fun to do as well too. And then you would just create, take this final product, send it back into Lightroom, and then you can put any kind of final edit you want and then crop it at that point. So um, that's really my editing process. There's, you know, of course, always subtle differences between all of the photos, but that's the basic framework that I go through on every single one of my photos. So I hope you're able to get something out of this week's video that you can either apply to your selection process of your images or your actual editing process of your final photos as well. And as always, any questions that you have, definitely leave those in the comment section below and I guarantee I will get back in touch with you. And if you enjoyed this week's video, if you could give it that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed already. And as always, I really do appreciate you watching this week's video, and I'll see you next week. Bye.